Are you a Windows user that's tired of Microsoft's bullshit? Are you getting more heavily into creative applications that run better on Apple Silicon? Are you just wondering if the grass really is greener on the other side? If the answer to any of those questions was yes, or no, and you're just here for fun, stick around. Today, we're going to cover macOS from a Windows user's perspective and getting into what I like, what I don't like, and I'll leave you with some tips if you're transferring from Windows to macOS. Let's get into it. Overall, the biggest difference between Mac and Windows is the level of control that the end user has. Generally, macOS tries to make things simple and easy at the cost of reducing granularity. It just works. Windows isn't exactly the opposite, but it generally assumes that the user knows what they're doing and just tries to get out of their way and let the user do what they want. If you absolutely need to have full control over your computer at any given moment, you're probably not going to like using macOS. If, however, you're fine with sacrificing a little bit of control for more integration, you're going to do fine. First off, a little bit of history for why I'm even using this MacBook. My family's home computer was always a Windows desktop. Throughout middle and high school, my school system gave all of us Windows laptops to use. The only time that I used a MacBook was for five seconds when a friend needed help figuring out something, or back in elementary school when they brought out the cows. Not those cows, the computer on wheels. Anyways, when I went to college, my business program recommended that we get Windows devices because of some software that would only run on Windows. Thus, I ended up purchasing that Surface Book 2, and it was great. I loved that thing. When I wanted to get more heavily into video editing, I used money from an internship to build myself a custom Windows editing PC. So if I was happy with Windows, why did I buy that MacBook? You see, I wanted a device that would let me video edit on the go. While I can carry my desktop around with me, it's not actually that heavy, it was getting really annoying bringing it home on breaks every time that I wanted to work on a video when I wasn't here in my apartment. I also couldn't bring that to a cafe or a coffee shop to work on stuff. I would have done it on my Surface Book, but it felt like it cried trying to play back one stream of 1080p video in DaVinci Resolve. I'd started looking at Windows laptops and sure, I could find devices that had high-end Intel and AMD processors that would absolutely rip through video editing. If I tethered myself to the wall and dealt with the sound of a jet engine constantly, I needed a device that could last a full day on a charge, easily slip into a backpack, edit a video without reaching the surface temperatures of the sun, as well as give me the same performance on battery life off battery. The only device that I could really find to do that was the MacBook. So out to Best Buy I went and $1,600 later my bank account returned. Now getting used to macOS was a big shock. Things immediately felt different with settings all in the wrong places, Windows not being managed correctly, and the system even asked me for my fingerprint to change the date and time. The first few days after getting the MacBook were spent understanding gestures and learning keyboard shortcuts and getting used to hot corners and using command instead of control. While both operating systems allow you to do the fundamentals like writing documents, making video calls, using applications, surfing the web, the big difference between these operating systems really comes from the freedom and control that the end user has. For example, Windows has much more freedom in terms of Windows management. You can drill deeper into the file system, and the OS supports a wide array of processors, graphics cards, and external devices. By default, Mac OS gives you surface level file access, Windows tiling, and support for Intel and Apple Silicon processors. Windows is more open while Mac OS is locked down for simplicity. If you're an iPhone user, which you probably are if you're in the United States, you're going to feel right at home using a Mac. Apple has translated a lot of the design similarities between the platforms. Windows lets me turn off animations, access drivers, and install software from a decade ago. Macs? I can't really do those same things. That simplicity, though, helps macOS feel much more at home on a laptop. 
Using a trackpad with macOS feels so natural. Gestures run more smoothly and the tracking quality is out of this world good. In general, the system feels more responsive with animations running at higher frame rates and layers and transparency feeling more authentic. The whole system just feels more alive, like it's trying to help me, the user, along, rather than just telling me to figure it out and do it myself. Now, getting used to macOS took time, and the OS is more locked down with less control, but there are still pieces of it that I enjoy. First, the system is very efficient, especially on Apple Silicon. I rarely hear the fan spin up and temperatures remain very cool. Battery life is also pretty incredible. Yes, some of that is related to the efficiency of Apple Silicon, but the software has a large part in maintaining how good your battery life is actually going to be. Same with performance. Yes, a large part of that does come from the power of Apple Silicon, but if your software isn't optimized for your processor, it doesn't matter how much power your processor actually has, it's still not going to run very well. Next up, Windows management. Now, Windows management on macOS sucks, so why am I listing this as a pro of the software? Well, I find that because it's so bad, and it feels like macOS was designed for you to focus on one thing at a time, I end up focusing on one thing at a time, which can honestly be kind of a refreshing change of pace. You know, sitting down and really paying attention to one thing without all of these other distractions and apps competing for mental space and focus. Now, I did install Rectangle, which is a free app designed to kind of enable some of that Windows snapping management to macOS. And while it's not without its quirks, it's mostly solved my issues with management on macOS. It's not quite as seamless as Windows, but it's a hell of an improvement over default Mac. When I want to though, I can feel more immersed in one thing at a time. Lastly, I actually kind of like the design of Mac OS. All the layers, the translucency, the animations, in general it feels more human and warm, less cold and machine-like. The dock has a nice spring to it, scrolling feels heavenly, and keyboard shortcuts make navigation a breeze. While there are elements of the design that have grown sloppy, like the area with the notch or some of the app icons, in general, I much prefer the look and feel of macOS. Now, of course, as much as Tim Cook would like you to believe, macOS isn't perfect. Yes, there are elements of macOS that I like, there are things that I really don't, starting off with having to do things the Apple way. I mentioned before that Windows management is atrocious. Split screening apps is tedious, the minimize button is confusing if you forget about the four finger swipe down on the trackpad to show open windows, and clicking on an app in the background brings the entire program to the forefront, meaning your calculator disappears every time you click off of it, and dragging files to another application is kind of messy. Do you need to fix a driver issue? Apple says no. You don't need access to that kind of software in case it breaks. Do you dislike animations? Well, the best that you can do is change the Genie animation to scale, which I did immediately. The behavior of the menu bar up top is absolutely bewildering to me sometimes. A notification center doesn't let you mass clear notifications. Apps don't close when you fully quit out of all the open windows. And I hate that in general, Apple treats me like a slack jawed nitwit who doesn't know how to use a computer can't be trusted, and needs to be guided through everything. <sighs> Alright, that got aggressive. Before I end this video, we'll stop with a positive note. A few tips for using macOS if you are coming from a Windows device, or you're just new to macOS in general. I highly recommend that you learn the different keyboard shortcuts and trackpad gestures. Use Command and Spacebar to launch Spotlight Search, Command and W to close a window, and Command and Q to quit an app. Use Spacebar to preview files in Finder, and Command-Shift-5 to access screen capture. You can also use Command-Tab to switch between open applications. On the trackpad, swipe up with four fingers to get to Mission Control. Swipe down with four fingers to see all the available instances of an app. 
pinch in with three fingers to get to the launch pad and pinch out with three fingers to see the desktop. I also highly recommend enabling the three finger drag in the trackpad settings and I installed Chrome to install web app versions of Google Calendar and Google Keep. Also, I watched a bunch of other videos talking about tips, tricks, and shortcuts around macOS, which I highly recommend you do as well. Sarah Dietschy actually has a really good one. So to wrap all of this up, if you're thinking of switching from Windows to Mac, but you're worried it's gonna cause problems, I'd say you should relax. Yeah, the first few days, they're gonna be annoying as you go for a keyboard shortcut that doesn't exist, or you look for the menu bar within an app instead of up at the very top. While you can't see the speed you're transferring a file in macOS, both platforms let you accomplish pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it'll take you some time to get used to using command over control. Yes, the different behavior of the traffic lights in different apps makes no sense. No, the Windows way is not the Mac way, and it may not be your way. But Mac OS does have its advantages, namely the speed, the efficiency, and simplicity of the software. While this Windows user does still wish I could have the power and battery life of Apple Silicon on Windows, I've grown to enjoy Mac OS, and I'm pretty sure you will too. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to using macOS or you're switching from Windows to Mac, let me know your experience down in the comments below. For now, I'm Michael with TechMB. Make sure you get subscribed to see more from me, and I'll see you later.